Hey, I'm Nixie Pixel, and you're watching my brand spanking new show, OS Alt. I'll be your tour guide on our journey through the good, bad, and ugly of open source. If you've ever needed to use a word processor, spreadsheet, or create a presentation, you know all about Microsoft Office Suite. This monster of a program is the default Office software suite for most businesses running Microsoft Windows and many using Macs. The most recent release is Office 2010. Yes, I do realize this is two years from then. And different versions are available with different feature sets and pricing. We like it because it's designed to handle most Office productivity tasks from document production, to spreadsheet formulation, to creating full multimedia presentations and even a basic database. We also like that its document formats are the most commonly used and supported with the exception of uh, Adobe's PDF. It even has some advanced features such as in-depth developed formulas for Excel and easily available support. We don't like it because it's uber expensive, and it gets more so the more features you buy. It kind of escalates, like you get the home, the basic, the business package, you know how it goes. Microsoft uses proprietary document formats and does not play well with others. And sometimes even Office programs have stability issues or the authentication copy protection causes issues, of course. In the early 2000s, Sun Microsystems released an open source program called OpenOffice.org, which you may have tried out. Over time, this became known as a viable alternative to Microsoft Office. In 2010, it was purchased by Oracle, and due to problems with Oracle, many of the developers left the OpenOffice team to work on its successor, LibreOffice. It's also a free and open source Office suite available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. LibreOffice consists of Writer, a word processor much like Microsoft Word, Calc, a spreadsheet program similar to Excel, Impress, a multimedia presentation program like PowerPoint, Draw, which is a diagram and sketch program, Base, a database front end like Access, math, an equation editor, and a PDF file creator to ensure cross-platform document compatibility. The designers have taken care to create an interface and feel that it is close to Microsoft Office, helping users make the switch. There is a good-sized user community who help others when they are having problems. LibreOffice is lightweight. It's relatively small when installed and generally runs very quickly, though it can run into performance problems when dealing with very complex tasks. It's compatible with the vast majority of proprietary formats, including Microsoft Office formats, with very few exceptions. Users may have trouble importing Office 2010 files that contain some of the more complex features. Businesses using Office for advanced tasks may notice some of its advanced features missing from LibreOffice, but in most cases, if Office 2010 can do it, so can LibreOffice. Overall, I'd give LibreOffice five out of five stars as an alternative to Microsoft Office. It can do almost anything that Office can do, and in general, the only users who will miss out on some of the features that the full Microsoft Office suite contains are those who would probably be provided an Office 2010 license by their company. So for the home user, LibreOffice is an incredibly useful tool, and it can do few things that Office 2010 cannot, all for free. Free software is a matter of liberty, not price. To understand the concept, you should think of free as in free speech, not as in free beer. Richard Stallman. The latest version of LibreOffice can be downloaded for Windows, Mac, and Linux here. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in next Friday for your weekly dose of all things open source. Talk nerdy to you later.